Hello, welcome to another edition of Riding Shotgun. I'm uh, just headed back from Champaign, was just over here for a uh, kind of a going away luncheon for old friend Steve Kelly. You may know Steve as uh, his voice has been on a line broadcast radio and television for many years. Um, used to co-host Saturday Sports Line with Lauren Tate and uh, Steve is retiring and heading to Colorado and play some golf. Uh, good for him. He's one of the really great, great people in our business and we'll miss him a lot. I think we'll still see Steve occasionally and a good group of people there at that luncheon today. A lot of the media people uh, Josh Whitman dropped by, Warren Hood, uh, Deputy Athletic Director, uh, Kent Brown, Sports Information, Derek Burson, Sports Information, a lot of the, a lot of the media guys. Uh, it's a, that was a good group, and it was fun to, to see Steve. Uh, a lot of the conversation today at lunch was about um, speculating about these coaching openings and where will John Gross land, uh, who will Brad Underwood hire, on his staff and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know that we know the answers to those, at least here at midday on Wednesday. Um, but, um, you know, if you like John Gross, um, then you'd want to root for him to get that Dayton job with Archie Miller leaving for Indiana. Boy, that'd be a good job. And John has uh, spent a lot of time in the state of Ohio as an assistant with Thad Mata and uh, Benedict Xavier and then and then uh, obviously head coach at Ohio University. He's recruited in, o in Ohio a lot. But uh, with Archie going to Indiana, you know, wouldn't be completely out of the realm of possibility that that he could be uh, someone Archie talks to about putting on his staff at Indiana. You know, John's John and Archie are good friends. And um, John's an Indiana guy, born in, you know, raised in Danville, Indiana, um, has recruited Indiana gotten players from Indiana to come to Illinois, which was unheard of. Uh, Jalen Coleman lands uh, and uh, Jeremiah Tillman for a year at, at Lalu. And uh, with his ends with Lalu, that's a, a, a positive as well. Um, so, you know, uh, that, that, that would be a, a, an interesting landing spot. Would be odd to see him on that Indiana bench wearing a red necktie. But you know, we've just gotten used to watching the same thing with Rob Judson sitting over there, former Illini player, former Illini coach, and was on Tom Crean's staff. Um, so, you know, and then there's some other openings in Indiana, in uh, Ohio as well, you know, head coaching jobs. So, I don't know, we'll see what happens with John. A lot of the coaching stuff really shakes out at the Final Four, which is um, a lot of coaches are going on Thursday. Um, there may be some there already, but a lot of them go in on Thursday uh, and stay at least through the games on Saturday. Um, I was always told by head coaches that most of them did not stick around for the championship game on Monday. Um, but um, but that's where a lot of the – I expect Brad Underwood to be talking to a lot of people. A lot of people will be approaching him uh, and talking to him about, you know, could they possibly fit on his coaching staff at Illinois. We know Jamal – uh, Walker is going to be on that staff. Um, that hasn't been announced, but that was just paperwork. And then I think that the university would probably prefer, um, they might not do it this way, but I think they'd prefer to get that whole staff set and then make one announcement. Here's who Brad's coaches are, even if they leak out one at a time beforehand. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of conversation, too, about what about a former Illini on Brad's staff? That comes up every time there's an opening. Some of the times it's guys that, I don't know a nice way to say it, need employment. Um, there was four coaches in college basketball last year who were Illinois guys out there um, and um, as assistants. And one of them was Roger Powell. I don't see Roger coming back under Brad's staff. First of all, I think he's got a really great relationship with Bryce Drew. He's got a title there, too, associate head coach. Uh, that means something. They seem to be a good fit. Uh, Roger doesn't really address the Chicago situation, if you, th if you think there's a Chicago situation. He's a Joliet guy, great guy. Would love to see him at Illinois sometime, but um, I don't see that this time around. Chester Frazier at Kansas State. I don't think Chester's leaving Bruce's side. Uh, they seem to be a really tight match. Um, Jarence Howard at Kansas. Um, you know, maybe maybe that could happen under some circumstance, but 
uh, I don't I don't know what Jarrett's is making. Um, I I should find that out, but I imagine he's well paid at Kansas, and you'd probably have to. Uh, give him a boost for him to consider this a better situation and with with Brad just arriving he surely knows that or has to feel like the head coaching job isn't going to open up right away I know Brad stayed one year at Oklahoma State but I think that was uh, an aberration based on some factors uh, related to the relationship with the AD but um, so I don't see that happening and then uh, Rob Judson you know Rob uh, was just on to Coach Green's staff, and so I don't see Rob uh, coming back to Illinois right now. Um, great guy, one of the all-time great guys, uh, and you got to root for him. And um, but so I, I'm looking for different people. I think we thought Lamont Evans would be a, a strong possibility, but once they named um, uh, one of the other Oklahoma assistants there, uh, Coach Boynton, to be the head coach replacing Coach Underwood, um, you know I think he and Lamont were apparently close and friends and uh, they offered him a big bump in pay I think one thing that's happened is that AD realizes I better start giving basketball more attention than I did including salaries um, for it cost me my job that's my opinion and um, so um, they did basically the same thing Illinois is doing with Jamal they have a valued recruiter and they're taking measures to keep him there so um you know, hey, Brad knows guys in the business. He's got guys that are undoubtedly on his radar. He may even have somebody that he knows is going to be one of the people. But um, I wouldn't be a surprise at all if he spent time in Phoenix um, talking to coaches, uh, considering other people, and trying to come up with a good match. You know, coaches, uh, you know, they want to, they want to, they want a couple of dynamic recruiters. Uh, it'd be great if all three were, but usually one of them's got to be a a really special basketball mind too or they like to would like to have that it looks sounds to me like Adam Fletcher the strength and conditioning coach uh, for this past year at Illinois with John Gross is probably going to stick around and that would be great news uh, Fletch did a great job many of you are familiar with the uh, strength and conditioning gains that he posted over the summer on these guys and um, you know the main thing I look at they did not have the injury uh, bug that they had the year before something uh, perhaps in preventative work that he's doing helped. Maybe they were just lucky, but I'd go with Fletch. Um, the guys really responded to him. He's a former player. He sees the game. He understands a lot of this stuff. And um, so, I mean, if he's going to be back, that would be wonderful. Um, I haven't really seen how he's going to, the titles that he's picking, Brad Underwood is picking for his support staff. You know, sometimes guys have a they have a guy that they call director of operations, which was James Herring this last year for John. Um, but sometimes they call that person player development or, uh, you know, they just have a different name for it. Um, and um, that might be the that might be the role that Darren Hurts played this last year for John. Um, and so that's up to him to create those position titles. I think those positions are now posted so that you can get the clock ticking on them and fill them as quickly as possible. Um, and so, th- you know, that's going to be the next thing. Go to the Final Four, network, talk, fill out this coaching staff. By all accounts, every meeting with recruits has gone well. Um, John uh, uh, Brad has not been down to Florida to see Trent Frazier, but I know that they talk a lot. And, and if you follow Trent on social media, you know, he does not certainly seem like a flight risk. He's a, he's a solidly committed guy, vocal in his commitment. Um, and in his enthusiasm to get with the program. So um, he'll, he'll get down there as soon as he had. This guy's plate's been full. They did the media blitz in Chicago. They did the media blitz in St. Louis. Those were important for him. Um, everything I can gather is that um, he's going to be pretty easy to work with. I think he'll be more open um, and be more inclined to talk on the side uh, a little bit just to say, you know, here, look, here's what we were thinking, here's what we're doing, uh, that kind of thing. So um, I look for that uh, from him. And um, the people that are working around him right now, uh, some of whom I saw today, have, have been very, very pleased with, um, you know, how cooperative he is, how reasonable he is to work with. Uh, he's just got, like they said, he's got a lot on his plate right now. He's just trying to get everything going and then occasionally pick up the phone and call his wife and, and 
and see how things are going back in still water and, and all like that. So, um, you know, it's it's we're past the chaos, but we've still got some things going on that uh, got to get ironed through. Uh, I know uh, from talking to Josh that uh, they've been meeting with the architects about the south end zone project. Um, I'm pretty sure that the end zone the horseshoe is going to be torn apart at the end of the season. And I'm pretty sure that it is their hope, um, hopes aren't always realized, but it is their hope that that horseshoe, not the whole project, just the horseshoe seating can be put back, can be moved and put back together prior to the start of the following season. And uh, that would be, that would be good. Um, they're, they're still trying to finalize design. The architects have been working with them. Um, I'll be very curious to see what it looks like, what is included, what got moved perhaps to, you know, they talked about moving something between the indoor practice facility and the, and the grass practice fields. Is that on the board now? Um, all that kind of stuff. So anyhow, um, and then we'll be finding out too if there's any other players coming or going. You know, this is when you learn about transfers. This is when you learn about uh, transfers leaving or transfers coming in. And, um, and then we'll be able to finally get a glimpse of what this roster looks like um, if there's any subtractions or additions as, as uh, Brad puts together uh, a roster and, and we get past the April 12th signing date too which um, you know that's another visit they made was to Mark Smith and, and uh, that went well uh, but his family is very thorough um, his parents are involved I think that's always the best situation when you're recruiting because you're not dealing with side people, different agendas. You're dealing with mom and dad, in this case particularly mom. And, um, you know, um, Michigan State was in, saw him, they've offered. Um, Kentucky at least has been sniffing around it. Um, you know, those are all flattering, but this is not a kid that is necessarily going to be flattered into his decision. I'm not saying he won't do any of those things. He might. But I think he's gonna. He's been very careful and very thorough in his process, and he he's liked Illinois from the beginning. He still likes Illinois. I, I'm not saying they've got him, not at all. I'm just saying they continue to be strong in his thinking, and uh, even after the coaching change, which you know that makes every, any recruit take another look. How do I feel now? Um, I think he still feels good, and um, he'll have to see. You know, and, and make his decision, but I don't think that decision is coming until you know just about April the 12th. I think they're going to take their time and, and really um, make sure that they've thought it all the way through. And it's a big decision for a kid. I don't blame him either. He's a, he's a heck of a player, and the fact that Kentucky and Michigan State are on him right now is just a tribute to what a great senior season he had at Edwardsville and how hard he's worked at it. Good for him. Cool. Um, anyhow, so uh, that's all for now. Um, and we'll we'll check back in. We'll have more news to report as a coaching staff gets put together, as we get to signing date and we'll see how some of these things pan out. And by the time I get back to the office, who knows? John may have gotten a job. Uh, we wish the best for him too. Hey, thanks everybody. Bye.